Welcome back to the Aquagon. We are again in the old penthouse suite here up top of, uh, did we ever figure out what hotel this was? Ooh, yeah, I think this is the Rio. Good view of the Palm. Or is this, the, or is this or it could be the new addition to your house. <laughs> oh, after we just fucking hammered that card last week. We had oh, some man. good picks. We had some good picks. Um, now, listen, I, I, and, and, and I want to make sure that ever, we are very clear on one thing. I know that the, we were heavy on Yari. And uh, he did not pull off the victory, but there is no way in hell, no way in hell that you thought that that was that the line was correct watching that fight. Great fight, but I'm I'm just Max doesn't win it nine out of ten times. Both guys, though, look, I mean, when you look at the after effects of that fight, both guys look like they are battered. Oh yeah. Um, uh, but uh, a very good fight, um, nonetheless. And, and listen, if you if you're mad. If you're mad about the, the, the pick, you know what? I'm not going to hate you for it. Air your grievances. Put it in the <laughs> comments. Tell me why it was it was a good thing, because I'm not falling for the light show on this one. I did not feel like I was on the wrong side. I felt like, listen, I got the guy at plus 500, and he's over here. He's getting his licks in just as much. Great fight. Has to be a winner. Has to be a loser. But sometimes that's going to happen. But I still felt that was about as close to a – well, I did take a free roll on it because I took a free roll on the on my free Fox bet. Shout out to yeah. Fox bet. Not a bad app, actually. Um, so I got my money back anyway. But I think it was worth it. I don't know what your thoughts were or any takes on that one. Uh, no, I think we pretty much said what it was. I mean, five to one, you got to take the dog in that situation. I mean, I think that was, what, 48-47. Uh, you got a dog, five to one, taking the former champ to the distance. This guy's got a lot of potential in Yair. Uh, I'm going to love to see his next fight. I'm going to be betting with him his next fight. Uh, I don't see anyone else really in the division that can hang with him. So it'll be fun. Very, very nice. Now, well, let's talk a little bit about this card here. They'll give the landscape because we actually ended up do need, needing to have a lot to unpack here. We have Vera versus Tate. Um, and quite frankly, at the first glance of the card, when, you know, I, we always kind of wait till the one card is over and then we kind of start to do our, our research on the next one. I really thought it was, I had to look, you know, we had to find a gesture out of 30 clowns fighting for, to be very, you know, upfront with everyone. Um, but then I actually... And, and I'm going to, I want to point this out, Dave. Okay. And I, we were talking pre-show about this. I found some, what I feel are some gems on the prelims. Now, prelims sometimes to me, and, and especially early prelims, um, and it's like fentanyl laced drugs. It kills people. Okay. Cause there's just not a lot of tape on some of these people, especially now that we're doing shows every, like there, there's all, like underdogs will hit then favorites will just look like they were, but the, you never know left from right to be quite frank on it. So, but I do think I have a couple of good things to give the people here. Um, now I want to let, let's just get into it and start unpacking this one. So for me, the first one that I want to talk about and I, I haven't placed an official bet, but we're sometimes me and Dave like to go conspiracy theory on these. And uh, I think we have something here. So we have Panero versus Sam Hughes. Now I'm going to give, I'm going to give you the line as it opened and I'm going to give you the line as it is real time, time of taping, which is Tuesday, the 16th. Panero opened up at negative 185. Hughes opened up at a plus 160. This line currently sits First fight of the night, by the way, negative 425 for Panero and Sam Hughes at plus 320. Now, I have a couple of takes here. And I, I for me, I think that like Vegas get the, the reason that Vegas is the way it is, is they know if someone stubs their fucking toe, breaks up with their girlfriend, like they have inside people in these gyms. I swear they do. Their, their outreach and resources are more than what the public eye thinks. You know what I mean? There's big money in this and they're the ones fronting it all. If you really think about it. So, you know, they want to make sure that they're on the right side. Now there is rationale. They want action on both sides. You know what I mean? In football, there's, there's, there's teams like, like, let's just take like Ohio state or Michigan with big fan bases. Um, so sometimes they'll place them as a favorite, even though they're not because they know they're going to get a lot of action on that side. There's situations that happen and there's a lot of one-offs, but let me bring us all back down to planet earth here. This is the opening fight on a prelim. And there was that much movement, which means one of two different things. Someone either, you know, exhibit a broke up with the, with a boyfriend um, or girlfriend 
or stubbed their toe, or there was some sort of undisclosed injury that the public doesn't know about that Vegas does. Or a hell of a lot of sharp money has, has come in. And this is this, we know that this is a cupcake, a layup that was to totally progressed just to progress uh, Panero in, in her career, as far as fighting goes. I don't know which one we're landing on on this one. Um, but to me, it's very interesting to see that much line movement. And you look at negative 425 and you're like, that's a lot of chalk to lay. But you have to ask yourself, why did it move that much for such a perceived meaningless fight? I mean, it doesn't seem like a like the, the betting um, a mecca of the UFC in 2021. I don't know, Dave, Dave, you like the conspiracy thought process. Uh, what is your take on this? Well, word on the street is Yanni the Greek has a big old bet on our girl Luana. But uh, no, just kidding on that one. But, you know, it has to be some sharp money. These casinos, these sports books, they do not want to have, um, you know, get middled or hit anything crazy like that. So it had to be a lot of money that they really respect moving towards um, our girl Luana here. I can't see any reason why it would besides that. I mean. Uh, Sam Hughes is a tough girl. I mean, she lost to, um, you know, you got Tisha Torres and then uh, Loma that's also fighting on this card, which is a tough chick. So I don't know. I don't see why they're not giving her any respect with this line, man. Um, there has to be something that we're not seeing, maybe something that will come to light once they start doing the press days, the media interviews, all this stuff. Maybe she'll spill the beans a little bit on what's going on. But uh, right now, that line movement doesn't make much sense to me. I, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do with this one. Um, I'll give the people this. This is where my head's at. If I didn't know all the backstory or where the line had opened up and everything like this, of course, you don't lay 425 chalk. On, 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 uh, I would say, for lack of a better term, a no-namer, right? Right. But because of so much movement in one direction and in, in this early of a, the first fight on the card, that negative 425 now looks appealing to me to parlay. Um, I haven't figured out where I'm going to place the parlay or, you know, what I'm going to do with that. But to me, it's almost, I, I can't not have it on a parlay um, for this card. So that's going to be what I'm going to recommend to the listeners slash watchers. Um, and let me know what you, what, you know, I, I would like to hear what other people have to say too. If you're watching this, uh, you know, comment on why you think that line would move that way. If maybe someone has information that we don't, but that is some crazy ass line movement that I, I have. I mean, we've been doing oh shit. I don't even, I don't even know how many shows we've done thus far. And I don't think we've seen something like this, you know, outside of maybe a late replacement or something like that, but not two of the same fighters with no real information as of to why. So that's a good, that's another interesting one. Now, number two, I'm going to give us a couple of statistics on this, on this one. And th this is going to be an actual, to me, I think it's, it's the most painfully obvious prop bet that I've maybe have ever seen and maybe ever will see. Hopefully I'm not wrong or I'm going to look like a complete idiot, but listen, sometimes you got to ride into the sun, Dave. Um, so we have Shailene. I'm not even going to try to book or butcher his name. Um, Nerda, Nerda Baki versus Sean Soriano. Now, I want to, I'm going to give us a couple of stat lines here and then I'm going to give you the floor, Dave. So the first thing, this is your typical wrestler versus grappler. Oops, sorry. I just lost everything. Your typical wrestler versus grappler matchup right now. And when I say that for both of these guys, for Soriano, he has no fucking idea what he's doing when it comes to grappling. And when it comes to uh, Shailene, he has no idea what it comes when it comes to striking. And I think that there is no way. And I have this line and I'm telling you, I'm not shitting you. I have the bet right now. And I'm looking at it right now at two, uh, the, uh, the over or the under at two and a half in a three round fight. Now between these two, they have a combined 12 losses inside of the submit inside of the distance. Um, now the underdog, the, the line is very important here as well. Um, we have Shailene coming in. Where is he at? Do you have the line on that one, Dave? Uh, Sean Serliano is negative 250. Uh, Shailene is plus 195. I'm seeing this one as 
unavailable on most books. Um, I have minus two ninety plus two twenty. I have them. I just got them at plus two twenty. Okay. okay. So the underdog, he is a black belt, and his opponent Soriano has been submitted five times. So that's a big, a big what if. Now, as far as the wrestling defense, fifty three. His defense, his takedown defense is fifty three percent. Not good at all. Okay. And we're talking about a guy in Shailene's last fight. If I'm butchering his name, I do apologize. In his last fight, he actually attempted 14 takedowns. So we're talking about a guy that likes to take people down. He's very aggressive when he does it. Now, here's the flip side. Shailene, when you talk about, well, why he's in the UFC and he has no idea how to strike. I literally think without actually knowing it, that he has the worst striking defense in the UFC at 26%. I don't know if there, if you'll see it worse than that. 26% striking defense. Both fighters have suspect gas tanks. Both fighters have a significant amount of losses, <laughs> 14 between the two of them, to be honest. And of those 14, 12 of them were inside the distance. Can you, I, I, and we have two fighters that are one dimensional and don't know what they're doing. It really comes down to whatever the other, whoever gets the other's game plan down. And for me, when you look at it that way, give me the plus 220 and Shailene. You know, if he takes them down, he, you know, like I said, like I always say, you go with the grappler for a couple of reasons. A, it hits big on DraftKings. B, um, you know, I think that if he gets them down, he only has to land two of them in two separate rounds and he wins this fight. Um, so that's going to be your hedge. And then I'm going to pound two, three units on that um, under two and a half. Uh, and you're getting just so you're I should point this out. You're getting plus 100. So you're getting even money that this thing doesn't. I mean, yeah, you got to lay a few minutes in there. But for me. That I, I don't know if there's anything that screams more obvious. What's your take here, Dave? Yeah, man, it's a weird fight. Both these guys, their last fight was their UFC debut. They both lost that UFC debut. Um, so not a lot of experience under each of their belts, even though they have, you know, double digit wins in the win column. But man, uh, I, I like the under two and a half rounds. You know, you get the bright lights. Both these guys trying to get their first UFC win. Um, somebody's going to either adrenaline dump or, you know, get a quick finish in this fight. I don't see it going the distance either. No. And the one thing too, and, and this is important to realize with, with Shailene is, is wrestling is always a tall order for 15 minutes. So you have to think when you're, if you're going to do that and you have a suspect gas tank, he's really going to need to take him down and submit him. But only reason I'm going with that is because I think if he does take him down, he's going to be able to do just that. And I'm just taking the plus side. I don't want that to be the emphasis on the bet. I think if there's anything though, I mean, it's one of these two is going to get to their game plan. And one of these two is going to finish it. And they couldn't have made that under low enough for me, but Jesus Christ, I'm like, what am I having to sweat for two? You know, what am I leaving two minutes and 30 seconds on the table? Uh, all day on that one. But uh, those are my two, um, prelim picks that i really found interesting and, and and felt really good about i don't know if you had uh, anything um that you wanted to kind of go to on the prelims here yeah the prelims i liked uh lapita loopy gonzas versus loma lakbomi that is one of the ones i like uh we've been real heavy on loopy lately um she had come into the ufc fight jessica pena after a couple of good wins in the lfa um and then, you know, she is just a real tough girl. She She's the one that had taken the fight uh, a few weeks back after a one-week layoff. Trying, I think she was trying to set the record for the fastest back-to-back -back wins. She went up weight class. I think she weighed in at like 121 and fought a real tough, long, lanky um, Carolina there. You know, she's she won the first round for sure. The second round was a little iffy in the third round. I think the size and the... The turnaround really was starting to weigh on her, and she couldn't get the job done. But, man, I really like this loopy girl. I think she's got a bright future in the UFC. And uh, she's taking it on short notice again for uh, Loma here. And Loma's a tough girl, but I think she has the perfect matchup here for Loopy. Um, you know, she's not – she's more of a short, stocky fighter, um, likes to strike and likes to exchange. I think Loopy's going to have a real good time taking her out on this one uh you're getting there at about minus 150 right now so i'm going to take loopy straight up at minus 150 
You look at that you, one at all? And Loopy, Loopy came in on short notice. Yeah, Loopy's coming in on kind of short notice here. Yep, uh, but canceled fight. I so I think that with with for me though with the, I don't know that the short I like it and I'll tell you one thing that I want to point out. If a fighter she just fought in October, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. So short notice, but not really short notice coming off of a camp. You know what I mean. Re- regardless if that camp was short or not, if she stayed consistent in the gym right after which you would have to imagine that she did maybe it's to avenge a loss i mean you're just talking about where someone's mindset goes Mm -hmm. but to even take this fight this quick i mean you'd have to think that she knows that she was staying ready and she really isn't that far removed for the cardio to not be there or all those different things as if anything it might enhance them the question you have to ask is how much damage did she take in that last fight and if that plays a factor but I always wor- what I worry about on short notice is gas tanks, and I don't think that's a factor here. So I actually don't mind the pick there. Yeah, we like that one. So Loopy minus one fifty. I might even put her in a few of our parlays, kind of boost it up. I think she's really tough chick. Uh, I like her coming forward. I even in that last fight, um, I had bet against her because she was taking on the one week turnaround, and I regretted it in the first round. Uh, she ended up losing ultimately, but uh, man, she looked good even against the tougher, bigger weight class lady. So I like that one a lot. Okay, nice. Which is a perfect segue into, I forgot to mention a couple of things. Uh, First off, like and subscribe. I do think it is still free to do that. It is free. Okay. And and if you sub, like there's not like a limit on how many people you could sub to. If you watch the stuff, sub, help, help some uh, content creators out. You know what I mean? We give you great bets. Uh, Our success rate is well over 50%. And we, like you said, we have the footage to prove it. Feel free to backlog that and check us. Uh, I'm all for it. And if you disagree, again, air your grievances. Don't internalize your pain. Bring it out there. Um, but uh, I do think that's that, that that's uh, uh, another good thing to say there. So um, I want to move on to Davy Grant versus Adrian Yanez. Now, Davy Grant, we're laying, we're, we're 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 taking some points here, plus two thirty-five. We are going with another underdog, right into the storm. Oh, that's another thing too. As you will find out, we do not go over all the car, the whole car. We go over what we think is worth betting and where you we think we get the best value. Okay, we don't just sit here and and, and do free rolls or or just guess the favorite or just give you a name and and kind of not say anything else, you know, with that. So, you know, I want to make sure that that's important too. If you're wondering why we haven't covered every fight, if we didn't cover, that means that we don't think that it's worth betting. But if you do, again, put it in the comments. We'd like to hear what you have to say as well. So Davey Graham. Now I know the thing with Adrian Giannis guy has death punch guy has a lot of power, especially for the division. Um, But the thing with me that there's a couple things that I like about Davey Graham. First off, when you watch his fights, this guy has grit. This guy, you couldn't knock this guy out with a fucking crowbar, okay? So I think that negates a lot of the biggest plus side for Giannis. And if you talk about a three-round fight, this is the other thing I really like about Davy Grant. Davy Grant puts a lot of volume out. He is a very active fighter in there. He uses the kicks. He goes downstairs, upstairs, in the mid, in the abdomen. He does it all. And I think as long as he, you know, I, and I know that power shots, are, you know, score a little bit more clout with the judge, but I don't know that Giannis is going to throw enough of them if this thing goes the distance to actually get his hand raised. The other thing too, I think you give a little bit of the edge, maybe slightly, maybe you disagree, maybe you don't, on the grappling side with Davy Grant. I think he mixes it in well. I think he goes in. Um, and I think that, I, again, I don't know that that's the way that he's going to go, but if you talk about octagon control, I think that's in Davy Grant's hand as well. The biggest thing though, Giannis has some very slick tr- striking. So I'm not going to hate someone if you're on that side. Um, but it's not, so, I'm, I'm going to go the opposite direction just because I'm going to trust that he doesn't get knocked out here and that he does enough. He does more volume throughout the course of a fight and scores more points with the judges to get his hand raised via decision. And if you're really feeling froggy, I might, well, I should say, if I'm really feeling froggy, we'll see, this will be a time of uh, fight time. I might actually sprinkle in a little bit on fight. Does uh, fight goes to decision uh, when that fight prop comes out. Any thoughts on that one, Dave? Man, I'm on the opposite side of this one. Man, I just, by watching Davey Grant, 
He's lost a step. He's only 35 years old, but, man, he was looking old out there last time he came out with Marla Vera. Uh, scorecard was a little weird on that one. But, man, Davey Grant just seems like he's one step behind maybe what he used to be. And this Giannis, man, he does have that touch of death. You're not afraid of that thing landing on Davy Grant's old chin and just putting him to sleep? That's what I'm afraid of in this one. Uh, I'll probably put him in my parlays. Giannis here on my parlays. Uh, probably won't be taking him straight. Minus 255 or so right now. Um, but I like him a lot. Maybe I would even take him uh, by TKO KO. See what that prop looks like in the future here. That's that. That would be the way to do it. Um, and and the you brought up the the Marlon Vera fight, and that was one of the reasons why. I mean, if you watch, like, he was he did beat the shit out of Davy Grant, but Davy Grant stood in there and took it. And that's the thing where it, it would worry me because I think he's a, a knocked. And the other part too, you look at Yanez is still yet to be taken down in the UFC. But if you look at Costa Lopez and Rodriguez's last three fights, these are not takedown artists. So I don't think the hundred percent, you know, holds a lot of weight in my mind. I can see that's why I'm still going to give him the edge, even though, you know, you look, well, he hasn't been taken down yet, but that doesn't mean he's not going to get taken down. And I think this is the fight where that's going to happen. Get a little bit of control time. I'll be it, you know, give me one round of it. Maybe Davey comes out, um, gets a little bit more of that special stuff, um, you know, early on in the fight, lands a takedown in the second, and then he loses the third because he starts to maybe gas a bit and takes a few on the chin because he is 35, but he stays in there, doesn't get knocked out and wins the fight. But again, it's a very interesting one. Um, at plus two thirty-five, though, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna walk too far into the storm and and, and take a bet with uh, Vegas Day Dave on this one. <laughs> um, I'll keep my sobriety uh, on the tequila bet, but I'm going Davy Grant. You're gonna be on the opposite with Yanez on this one, so appreciate the take. No, no, uh, before we get into um, you know the two biggest ones on the card, did you have any other others that you wanted to discuss that you're betting? Um, I do like another woman fight, the Joanne Wood. First, Tila Santos. Um, I believe this is another one where uh, Santos. We have to get the Britannica. Yeah, Santos <laughs> is going to be coming in as a replacement. A uh, little last minute here. Uh, let's see. Alexa Grosso had pulled out of that fight, and they are giving you plus money to take JoJo Wood. And this chick is tough as nails. You know, she's coming off that split decision loss to Lauren Murphy, which who knows what the judges were thinking on that fight card. I mean, I think JoJo got completely ripped off in that fight. And uh, if you remember just recently, about a month ago, Roxanne Monteferi had her last fight against Tila Santos. And I don't know if you remember watching that fight, but man, she did not look too good in that fight. Uh, she got the win over Roxanne, but man, it wasn't that impressive. Uh, Roxanne. Was, you and know, Roxanne going really isn't isn't looked very impressive. Where you know Murphy, she's fighting at the top. So even albeit if it's a you know speculation on the judgment call, still not something I say is a bad loss considering you know the talent levels in the division. Um, you know, quite frankly, you might have sold me on that one. I might I'm, I haven't placed any bets on it yet, and I may not. But you, you drive a tough bargain there. Well, I mean, JoJo, she she had beaten Jessica I, and then she should have beaten Lauren Murphy, which had gotten the title shot after the split decision. So in reality, I mean, she should have been the one getting her head kicked off by Shevchenko. But uh, she's she's slumming it and fighting uh, Santos here, and I think she's coming out full of piss and vinegar and really, mm -hmm. really trying to show everyone who's boss. You know, she's up getting up there at 35 years old, but, you know, these people age differently. Uh, it's a young 35 for JoJo here, and I like her as the – uh, plus 240 underdog. I'll take it. I'll take it. Are we to the two main dishes here? I think I'm ready for it. All right. Well, we have Michael Chiesa versus Sean Brady. Not to be confused with the NFL player for the uh, Bucks, formerly known as the NFL quarterback for the uh, New England Patriots, Tom Brady. This is Sean Brady. Tom Brady is an active UFC fan, though, as he's been to many a fights. Um, so the line as of the time of taping, you are getting plus money with, if you go with Chiesa at plus 135. Um, to me, I'm on Chiesa's side, but I will I will give you the floor. I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll let you go with a solo act, uh, Adele style here, and kind of tell me what your thoughts are first, and then I'll chime in. All right, man. Well, Sean Brady... He is coming into this fight undefeated, 14-0. Um, 
He's the guy, you know him if you see him, he's got that big old demon face on his back. That might kind of jog your memory a little bit. Big old red demon face on the back. And, uh, you know, he gets... Yeah, he's got, like, the devil on his back. He's got the devil on his back. Yeah, you know, he's a good good fighter. This is a big step up in competition going up to Michael Chesa here. Um, You know, I've seen Sean Brady get into some weird positions on the ground that these lower-level guys that he's been fighting will let him kind of... Uh, slip out of it or get by on, you know, being a little bit out of position on the ground. And then this is where Michael Chase's experience is not going to let that happen, man. Um, I can't believe he's a dog in this fight. Um, the experience that he's going to be bringing to this fight, I I just don't see why. I think he's going to be getting his first loss. You know, that people love Chase, that they got him in the broadcast booth. Uh, you know, that I think he was the favorite when he had lost to, was it, uh, I was going to say Luque, his last fight out. Um, was that Which we called that loss. Yeah, we did mistaken. call that loss. So Luke is the t- top tier guy, but you know Chase is like a number five in that division. Solid gatekeeper. Um, I don't know if he's ever going to have a title run, but man, real tough, tough, tough guy in that division. I just don't think Sean Brady's ready for this kind of uh, talent level. I'm taking Chase at the plus one thirty five. That's that's crazy money for me uh, on a big name like Chase. Now, now you talk about the the devil tattoo. You, you know, think about the church bells you got to have. To go into the tattoo artist and say, just ink me a, a, a devil life size on my back. <laughs> I mean, you you have to at least feel that you are a badass. You have to feel and, and, and real talk like that. Jesus Christ himself could not fly down on whatever arc the Bible has him on and give this give the victory <laughs> to his opponent. Like I like he feels that way. OK, right. now let's talk about the optics. Sean Brady, big, heavy hands. He's a striker right he'll 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 go in there and hit you definitely not something i want to see chiesa get in a firefight with but i think that chiesa is a very good game planner i think he has a very good mma iq and i think that he is durable so i think he is going to take some shots in this fight but i think ultimately he's going to win via octagon control he's going to stay out of that range he's not i mean I would hope that he just doesn't sit in there and, and let this guy fight at range and just land some bombs at him. I don't like the amount of volume that he throws. Um, I don't really like the amount of volume either of them really throw, to be quite frank. But I can see it. Chiesa has to be willing to commit to the grappling in this fight. And if he does, I think that's the path to victory. Give me the plus side. That's why I'm going with Chiesa, because I think that he's going to be able to do it. I think, and, and listen, Chiesa hasn't had a terrible run. I mean, prior to losing to Luca, he won his last four fights. Um, You know what I mean? And three of those four went to the decision. And then one of them was a submission. Submission is good. Going the distance is good. It shows durability. And uh, you know, for me, I think that these are all things where I'm, I'm I'm comfortable taking the plus side. And then you got to talk about the step up in competition. You know, if you, if you're fighting lower level competition, it's not that hard. So, you know, you could be very talented, but it could be, what, uh, you know, for lack of a better term, a shock to the pool when you get in there with someone that's a little bit, you know, eons above the IQ that you've been facing thus far. And that, to me, is going to be the tale of this tape, um, you know, as far as Chiesa. But I am looking forward to this fight. I think this is it's good to see uh, Chiesa being pretty active as of late. And, um, you know, I'm interested to see what he has to offer out there. Yeah, I'm excited about this one. Oh, sure. Are we t- now we're to the main wait we're just trucking along on this one so this is gonna be a good one all right we have Vieira versus tate um i'll give the line here misha tate plus 105 get the plus side Vieira at negative 125 dave where are you going on this one man i was uh hitting that misha tate line early at minus 120 thinking that she was going to be going maybe minus 200 by the time fight time came uh now i'm seeing it move to plus 105 i'm going to be taking some more money and putting it on misha tate here um i love everything about this fight for misha uh you know i think a little bit of time off did her good uh, she got her head right she came back got a good win over you know somebody that was on their way out uh but the way that this fight is lined up with it being five rounds and our girl, uh, Kaylin Vieira, having a real hard time wrestling versus her last opponent, uh, Yana Kuntzikshaya. I tried my best on that one. Um, you did. You did a good job. I know that Tate is experienced is going to really be able to let her uh, pick her spots, put some grappling pressure on her, and really use that uh, cardio that 
Misha Tate's kind of known for to kind of win fights later, maybe in the fifth round, a la uh, Holly Holm fight. She uh, she didn't get knocked out by Holly Holm. She didn't get beat, and she choked her out in the last few seconds of that fifth round. Uh, I'm, th I'm thinking the gas tank's coming into play. I don't think Vieira's going to have what it takes to stay uh, competitive all five rounds. Uh, she's not going to be able to finish Misha Tate. Uh, she's one of the toughest chicks in the division. And you know that the UFC didn't bring Misha Tate back to give her a killer on her second fight. Uh, everything's propped up for her to win this fight. I don't see why this line's going the other way. Uh, maybe some people in Vegas are taking, putting some crazy bets in uh, because Tate's getting a little older and they know that she had the layoff. But uh, she came back you better than ever. Uh, I think your training partners and uh, her camp's going to be really good and get the win on this one. Misha Tate looked really good in her last fight. And, like, this could be, like, that resurgence that I can get behind. The other thing, too, with Vieira, I mean, and I don't know why Sharps would put money on her. She hasn't exactly been extremely active. She's only fought once a year dating back to September of 2017. And she, if you talk about strength of competition, and you got to, you know, obviously you got to go a little bit deep back down to 16, but Tate has been fighting at the top for a very long time. I mean, she's lost two of her last three. Um, I would say the only quality win is Eubanks for Vieira. And, you know, outside of that, I mean, you still look back, it's it's two out of three. Right. A very a lot of unprovenness. And it's not like she's just been so active where, you know, you got to look, oh, well, Misha Tate, she has, you know, she hasn't been very active. But you know what? She has fought this year already and looked damn good. And it looks like she, and again, she probably stayed with it very active riding her high horse. And I think that this is, this is part of that resurgence that you might see. And it's always, you know, it's a make or break, obviously for Tate, she has a lot at stake with this. Um, I would say actually both fighters have their back against the wall because I don't know. I mean, with them doing cards every, you know, every weekend, maybe not so much, but if you're talking about a fighter that only wants to fight once a year and now your four fight look back is you've lost three out of four, you know, I don't know that you have a spot on the roster anymore either. So I think it's fairly interesting. I always like, a, a, you know, that we have two fighters that, you know, might have their back against the wall as far as their career goes fighting for a main event. But yeah, I mean, give, give me the plus money, give me the more proven fighter and give me the fighter that looked better in their last fight. For you know sure. what I mean? And recently, I mean, throw out the, the gap, like, Tate, I don't know if this is playing a role in this line movement, but again, throw that gap out. She looked good in her last fight. That's your ledger for what you're going off of. You know what I mean? I don't give a shit what she was doing prior to that. She could have fought every single day and lost every one of them. She looked that good in the fight. Now that changes my mind. You've made adjustments. It is possible. We've talked about this before on the show that with age, you learn. You figure things out and you do get better. There are people that just have that it factor in sports in general. Now, I'm not saying that's Misha Tate, but I am saying that I'm going to bet to find out. So that's where kind of where my head is with this one. Yeah, I love that Misha Tate pick, man. Uh, I'm all over it. I'm going to be putting, you know, I'm probably already two units deep at minus 120. I'll probably go two more at plus 105 at fight night if it gets any higher. I'm going to have to hit it again, man. You know, when you like a line like this, you got to really cash in. Um, this is one where Dave is going to lose complete cabin pressure. He's either losing his house going. or buying a second house. But <laughs> we don't know which one's going to happen. So stay tuned for more. Um, but we appreciate all of those who tuned in to hear us out. This was a quick one. So hopefully you're going to play some big bets and cash in on them. Um, one thing to look out for, um, me and Dave, as we are – coming up on the end of 2021 we thought it would be nice to do a show to kind of talk about what matchups we would like to see as we head into 2022 i think this was a very epic year of matchmaking overall i would say it was, i would put it as an a minus or an a maybe the best in ufc history 2021 was it gave some excellent fights there was multiple times where i was saying wow that was the best fight i've ever seen wow that was the best fight i've ever seen best card i've ever seen i said that so many times and i didn't i, I hadn't said that in the years prior so a plus to um the ufc but i think it's always interesting to talk about what we think should be next for you know some of the bigger names within the sport um so stay tuned for that show we'll probably have that out in the next week or two two weeks on the high end one week on the lower end maybe next weekend we'll tape that one out um and then obviously we have some good cards on the horizon still rounding out 2021 um that is all i have do you have anything you'd like to add dave well yeah just remember uh no fights 
the week after on the 27th, uh, we're going to be looking at Rob Font, Jose Aldo the following week, which is going to be a hot, hot, hot card for us to break down. Uh, we're going to have two weeks to do it, so every single fight might get touched in on that one. Uh, so stay tuned. Make sure you like and subscribe uh, so you get notification about that one because we're going to be making oh, yeah. some money that for you. that pay-per-view in December, if you look at that main card, holy shit, that is a card. <laughs> I can't we are wait for, for that bad boy. We're going out with fireworks, as the UFC is accustomed to doing. Um, before Dana White takes his little uh, his little sabbatical moving into the next year. But uh, as always, please like, subscribe. It's totally free, free to you. Makes us really happy. Happy, happy, happy. Uh, maybe we'll be back in an actual hot tub here shortly. Uh, but until then, stay thirsty, my friends. Stay positive and test negative. See you out there. <laughs>